Joining us uh, with a reaction to that interview in this morning's Boeing results is uh, Ron Epstein. He's Bank of America's securities research analyst. Our guest host is BlackRock's Rick uh, Reeder. He's also here, and uh, CBC, uh, CBC senior markets commentator Mike Santoli is also here. Ron, what was your impression of what you heard? Yeah, so, I mean, on some levels, I think he was, was being earnest, right? I mean, you know, the 737 is a, you know, it's a long-storied airplane, and, and they are going to fix it. It was an airplane that had a, a flawed system, right? So, you know, again, it kind of goes back to, you know, you, you, had, you had a system that had uh, one failure and could take down the airplane, right? So there's, you know, you know, what he didn't answer, I think, are a couple things. One, how do you change the culture in an organization of, you know, 150,000 people. It's hard to do. It's big. How long is it going to take? You know, I know from my experience at Bank of America, we're a big organization. It took a long time. Um, seems like we're in a good place. Um, but it takes time. Um, the other thing he didn't answer is, what's his vision for the company going forward? You know, one of the things they announced at the press conference it was a week ago, he did, um, that they were putting the NMA, they were cutting the NMA. So what, where's your, what's your path forward here? Because their biggest competitor in Europe right now is, uh, you know, they're building an airplane that's going to address the middle of the market. The middle of the market, we think, could be upwards of 3,000 airplanes. Right. So, you know, the A321 XLR is a fantastic airplane. They don't have anything there right now. Did you, did you like, though, his, what I, I, I seemed like an adjustment in terms of his approach to all of this, which was, look, we're putting out what we think, but we don't really know, and we're not, we're not, we're not dedicated to any of these dates anymore. Yeah, I, I think that's a reasonable answer, right? I mean, you know, the, 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 the Boeing, uh, you know, answers before were, yeah, this is a hard date. We'll be there. Who, and, the... and then they didn't get there, right? I mean, so, I mean, and, and to some extent, they, they probably really don't know. And I think his comment about, you know, something else could pop up, something else could pop up. Did you hear anecdotally about uh, the relationship that, that Boeing has with its, with different stakeholders? And what, what is the most important? Is it with the FAA and regulators? Are they satisfying all of the concerns and inquiries from all their, their customers and, and their carriers? Because it sounded like if I were him, I, it, he said, no, the discussions are not cordial with yeah. our carriers. And I'm wondering, what is he, do you think Boeing's avoiding uh, ha having face-to-face uh, interaction with the carriers until they know more? Do you, do you think the carriers are satisfied with, with what they're hearing? Yeah, my, my sense, kind of what I've heard anecdotally is, you know, on, on some issues that they haven't been as forthcoming as they with should the, be. With their customers. So this, this, this latest announcement. Who's their biggest stakeholder? Is it the, is it the regulators in the FAA? or is Well, this is, this is where his, his job becomes very difficult. You have the employees, and you do have shareholders, and you do have the customers, and they're all impacted by The this. customers must be right? you really know. upset. I guess, as well, we just heard. Yeah. It's, it's caused all kinds of problems. Just reading in uh, to how the stock is reacting, Ron, obviously it's kind of rising here, yeah. going back into the bottom end of the range it traded most of 2019. I, I wonder if, if it's just the takeaway is, look, it looks like the best guess for the upfront costs are now aired out there. 2020 is not going to be about making the numbers. It's going to be about getting this right. Um, and then you can kind of work off so, of that. And he seemed very, you know, to be striking the right tones. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that, right? So if you look at the numbers today, and I think this is what investors are going to be looking at, um, they, they took $2.6 billion charge in the quarter related to concessions to the airlines. They took $2.6 billion uh, in the quarter related to increased production costs. They identified $4 billion more in increased production costs in 2020. The one piece that they left out was what are the concessions going to be in 2020? Mm. We've been saying for a while now that you know, the, the total charge for this thing will probably be about $20 billion. Um, if you add in maybe another two to three billion of concessions, that gets you a little north of, of 20 billion. Yeah. So, and, and I think investors are saying, right? I mean, people, I had calls, incoming calls from investors asking, how big is the charge going to be? What's it going to be? This wasn't as bad as it could be. So, seeing the stock have a relief rally today, and I wouldn't be surprised if it continues into the day. In combination uh, with getting $12 billion of cash yeah. from the big right. markets. Yeah. So, yeah. it's. Right. It's way, not as bad as it could have been. He said he was not sandbagging with this quarter. Right. He said he was trying to be uh, giving as, as the best information he possibly could. Well, that, that, and, and I think it's another point. Like, you know, investors will call us and say, you know, they're just going to sandbag. He can sandbag. Yeah. Because he can't sandbag his customers. Right. Right. So if he puts out, a, you know, a date and it's a sandbag date, I mean, it, that messes with all the product, you and know, the all the airline the schedules of all his customers. Able, will not be yes. able to get back up. So there's time, absolutely no way he can sandbag. What are you thinking about? So so how do you think about this? There's thousands of companies in the world. There are companies that are you know, have what are pretty clear path to where they're driving revenue. If you're thinking about a broad portfolio, where would, what would you do with this? 
you don't want to get fooled in terms of a next piece of news. How do you think about this in a, as a broad investor in a bunch of different companies? Yeah, sure. I think, I think there's a couple factors. There's a, you know, the, the short to medium term, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if you see the stock trade around the fundamentals of the airplane going back into service, right? Um, almost like a drug getting approved, that kind of thing. But then when you start thinking longer term, and this is you know, where I think the vision of you know, what is the next step for the company? Are they going to do this middle of the market airplane? Are they not? You know, what, what, what is you know, the, the medium to longer term? Um, it gets more complicated. Another piece of news that I think is important that Phil mentioned that gets a little buried in this is they're taking down the 787 to 10 per month. In our financial model, we have it going from 10 per month down to 8 per month. 787 today is a very cash generative aircraft. If you, know, if you go down to eight per month on top of everything else that's going on, it makes the medium term a little more muddy. 